Today we're going to be talking about the bacteriophage decision between going through the lytic cycle or the lysogenic cycle, and in particular the gene regulation that underlies this decision. When a bacteriophage infects a cell, so here's our little cell, it shoots in its DNA, and this DNA will typically circularize. It'll go from linear to circular form. And here's our bacterial circular chromosome. Now, the bacteriophage can do one of two things. Two decisions. Whoops. So it can undergo the lytic cycle in which case it's going to replicate many, 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 many times and then basically kill the cell as it escapes to infect new cells. It can also choose instead to undergo the lysogenic cycle. In the lysogenic cycle, the bacteriophage does not kill the cell Instead, it incorporates itself into the bacterial cell's genome. When it gets incorporated into the bacterial cell's genome, it does not kill the cell. Instead, it gets replicated when the cell undergoes cell division. It can later choose to re-excise itself from the bacterial cell chromosome and undergo the lytic cycle. So it's possible for it to go back this way and then undergo the lytic cycle later on. So how does the bacteriophage make this decision to choose between the lytic and the lysogenic cycle? Well, it's typically going to undergo the lytic cycle when there are a lot of other bacterial cells that are growing and healthy around to infect, and it'll usually undergo the lysogenic cycle when there aren't as many bacteria around to infect. And we'll talk about that actual decision-making process later, but first let's talk about the region of the bacterial phage chromosome that's making this decision. So the circular bacteriophage chromosome Remember, it's circular once it gets into the cell. It gets into the cell and it circularizes. It's going to have a little control region. And this control region is the region that gets transcribed first. So here's our little control region. And this control region is going to regulate which genes are going to be transcribed off of this chromosome. Either the genes that are on this side of the chromosome, and these genes are going to be lysogenic cycle proteins, or the genes on this side of the chromosome, and these genes are going to be lytic cycle proteins. Our lysogenic cycle proteins are going to include things like recombination proteins, excisionase, and integrase for getting in and out of the chromosome. And our lytic cycle proteins are going to include things that are involved in DNA replication, lysis of the cell, as well as viral head proteins, all the things you need to make more copies of this chromosome and to get those copies out of the cell and infecting other bacteria. So next up, we're going to look at the structure around the regulatory region here. So let's look at this control region a little bit more closely so we can start to see how this control happens. So the control region is going to have several different kinds of regulatory proteins as well as some functional proteins. So some of the proteins that we're going to be thinking about are the int and X proteins. These are going to come in later, as well as these O, P, Q proteins. So the O, P, and Q proteins are going to be involved in the lytic cycle, 
and the int and axis proteins are going to be involved in the lysogenic cycle. Closer to the center of the control regions, we've got C3 and C2. CT, C3 and C2 together form a complex to activate lysogenic cycle genes. Right in the middle, we're going to have C1, which we'll talk about later. And then on either side of C1, we have a protein coding gene called N and one called CRO. And those are going to be the two first mRNAs that are made. And these are actually made in opposite directions. So N gets transcribed by a promoter facing that direction. This promoter is called PL. So the PL promoter makes that. And CRO is made by a promoter facing in this direction. And that promoter is called PR, promoter R. To go along with PL and PR, there are also terminator regions, and these terminator regions are termed TL and TR. So TL marks the end of the encoding region, and TR marks the end of the CRO coding region. There are actually two TR terminators, so this one here is called TR1. There are also going to be quite a few other regulatory regions in here, and we're going to bring those up as we come along. So what's really important for us now is thinking about, oops, the delimination of the N and the CRO protein coding regions. So this is going to be TL, PL, PR and TR1. Off of PR to TR1, we're going to make CRO, and off of PL all the way to TL, we're going to make N. This is just a little blow up of that region. And so this way, we're going to have around N protein and CRO protein. And the N protein turns out to be an anti terminator. And so it's actually going to allow for read through at TL and TR1. So these are just short little transcripts that are going to get made here. The transcript for N and the transcript for CRO. But if we have enough N protein around, the N protein can help polymerase read through these terminator regions and make much longer transcripts. So if this N protein's around, these transcripts will actually be much longer. And they're going to include more protein coding sequence on them.